Yo, what's good? It's Mastermind MMA, and this video is going to be a debate. The debate's going to be, does Tony Ferguson's championship hold more weight than Khabib's belt? Now, to me, I feel like Tony is a champion in his own right because he has had the belt. He hasn't lost the belt. Now, we've seen <clears throat> with the UFC and recently what they've been doing with the, the way they've been like stacking out these interim titles, we've seen people... We've had the lineal championships and the interim championships, and we've had the interim championships come up with their own merit and holding its own championship weight, which could be equivalent to the lineal champ. So, for example, you have GSP was the lineal middleweight champion, right? He won the belt off of Bisping, who won the belt off of Rockhold, who won the belt off of Weidman, who won the belt off of Silva, who won the belt off of Franklin, yada, yada, yada. So GSP retired with that belt. So he ended the lineage of that championship with him. Then Robert Whitaker came up amongst the ranks, and he's been doing his damn thing against motherfucking killers. So when he fought for the belt against the interim belt against Yoel Romero, that shit was not interim at all. You know what I mean? That was championship caliber fights. He 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 proved he is the top of the division and he is the champion and he is the best in the world of that division. So Robert Whitaker created his own championship, which because GSP ended the lineage, he started a whole new lineage. Then you had then now you got Izzy starting his own belt and with what he did with Kelvin, he put that he put that that validation on his championship. So now, like, it, it's almost because the interim titles is becoming a boxing model where you have two champions, essentially, that are both equally, without them squaring it out in the fucking cage, you don't know who's the best. So they hold, both have equal claim to being best in the world, and there's only one way to find out. They got to unify. So with lightweight, lightweight always had the three kings, right? Well, not always, but as as of in the height of it, it had the three kings. You had back like a couple years ago, you had the lineal king, Conor McGregor. And then you had Tony, his championship that he, he got on his run and that he got with Kevin Lee. And then you had Khabib with his championship that he won over Ally Kinta. All right. So this Tony is a victim of the business of sports entertainment. Being the athlete, the phenomenal fighter is, he fall vi he's fallen victim to no fault of his own to the entertainment aspect of the business that he's in, which is the fight game. So, Tony, right, I'm going to run this shit back. You guys could go back to the channel and, and, and look at this, these videos I did a couple years ago, like a year ago or so, where when the UFC 3 game was coming out, right? So, Connor just won. Connor just won the belt or uh from Eddie. He was the double champ. And then they had they they cut the trailer and then they had DC and Steep A facing off. This is before anything of the any of the talk was coming up. So I said in, in the video game, like they had the video game DC and Steep A facing up in the cutscene. And I was like, are they planning to do DC versus Stipe because they, they're all in cahoots. You know what I mean? Like, it's their shit. So they're going to use that for promo material. And lo and behold, it came out to be true. Also in that game, you know that they did Connor versus Tony a lot because Tony was the interim champ. And we don't know what was happening with Khabib because we don't know. He, was, he wasn't he was making it good with the weight cuts. He had that shit where he had to pull out, almost died, like kidneys almost failed and all that. And we didn't know what the status was with Khabib. So we had we had Tony Ferguson and he he just beat Kevin Lee and he was pretty much slayed and the whole marketing thing for that is the winner of Kevin Lee Tony Ferguson is facing Connor. They even had Connor at the end of the promos laughing like they used him in the marketing that the winner of this goes and fights Connor's for Connor for the unification. Then they had uh they had the shit where it was supposed to be it was supposed to be Tony versus Khabib and then Tony tripped on the wire. Now, quick story. Uh, you guys know I've been credentialed and went to a couple P events, uh, PFL events and covered them. And that's a whole high, high, super high level production quality. It, it's it's part of ESPN. They're, they're, they're on ESPN Plus and all that. So you have the, bit, the, the whole spiel there, right? 
And I tell you, man, like, there's fucking wires everywhere. Like, it's a fucking journey to go, to, to walk around and navigate through that shit. Because you got to make sure you don't fuck up anything. You, you, could, you could, like, kill a broadcast if you step on the wrong thing. And it's like a motherfucking, you know those, like, fucking, in those, like, crime movies, like the bank robbery things where they do the spray and they reveal the laser lights and that you can't touch it. That's exactly how the shit is. Like, you got to go through all this shit and... We're walking back after to do a, a post fight interview, a post fight scrum, and one of the journalists is like, "I almost pulled Tony Ferguson." And as he as he said that, I legit almost just tripped on a wire as he said that. And I was like, "Dude, like when I heard about that, that shit was so like implausible sounding, but like just being here and shit, I'm like, bro, like how do you not just fucking die in this shit? You know what I mean?" And it it, it really put in perspective, like, "Holy shit!" I know it sounds like a crazy story, but dude, that's super, super, super fucking plausible. And, all right, so he, he gets injured, and then it's Ally Kinta, right? So then it plays out to where now Khabib's got the belt. Khabib and Connor have this whole beef with the bus, and there's just way too much juicy marketing, marketing material to pass up. Connor just coming off of Floyd, the bad blood, and boom. Cash out on Connor while he's white hot. And Tony fell victim to that. <clears throat> they stripped Tony for no reason of his own. And then he ended up fighting on the same card as Connor Khabib. Now, Khabib on that night unified the title with Connor and got the lineal championship. So Khabib had a championship in his own right. <clears throat> and then he validated himself. By unifying it with the lineal champion. So he fucking was like, there's three kings. I cut the ki- one of the king's head off. I'm holding it up. And I am the king. Now you got to come prove to me. I-, I took out one of the kings. Now you got to take out a king. So that really, that really validated Khabib and put the true, like, there's no... There, 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 there is, but like for the most part, like you can't be mad at him being the undisputed champion because he unified with the lineal champ. Although there's Tony Ferguson in his own right, and they got to do that. I didn't even get to the timeline where Poirier comes into the picture, but <clears throat> so, so Tony Ferguson. Let's so Tony Ferguson on the same night as Connor and Khabib, he fights Anthony Pettis. What was Anthony Pettis's last fight as of recent? The motherfucking knockout of Steven Wonderboy Thompson. So Pettis is you've seen and, and you've seen that shit was fight of the year with uh Tony Ferguson. We've seen how much of a fucking killer Pettis is back to being and at such a higher level and doing it at a bigger weight class. That's pound for pound type shit. And Tony Ferguson's last opponents were in the pound for pound category because they've proven that their skill set has transcended weight classes. And to me, that's the metric for pound for pound. And I feel like that, I feel like Pettis has, is, is like, now he's fighting Nate Diaz. Now it's like this whole fucking, like, now we, like, we know Pettis is a fucking killer back on the shit. That, that win holds a lot of weight. And let's look, man, fucking, fucking, uh, before that, Kevin Lee, Kevin Lee went up to 170. He hasn't had success there yet, but Kevin Lee was tough. And that was Kevin Lee in his prime. Like Kevin Lee almost had Tony. He had a mountain. Mounted at the end of the first round, I believe it. And he, he, like, if there's more time in that round, he really could have probably gotten Tony out of there. And that's something what Khabib would be looking to do in that fashion. But, um, like, that would be how Khabib could have success in the Tony Ferguson fight. But, uh, so Tony, Tony got out, you know, Tony went, always goes through adversity. He beat Kevin Lee, right? And then RDA, RDA went up, beat Robbie Lawler, had, had some, had some stylistic pitfalls at 170. But he's proven that he, he's still a fucking killer and he's still doing his damn thing. Um, RDA just beating Kevin Lee, but um, but in the way RDA looked. So RDA, R, RDA just coming off of being the champion, so he still had that luster on him, right? I'm going to pull up Tony Ferguson's record right now. And I'm going to pull it in, in comparison to Khabib's last couple fights. So you had... Come on, Sheer Dog, load up. All right. So you have Tony. We know how much of a monster Pettis is. And he had that crazy fight. And his last fight, actually. Cowboy, dude. Cowboy just coming off at Ally Kinta. 
just the one who could be got his initial title off of like from beating he the guy that beat him in dominant fashion tony just like fucking broke him pretty much right so um let me pull up tony's record hold on um Yeah, all right. So, so Donald Cerrone, right? And he went up to 170, was having success, success as well. So you see all these pound for pound fighters that Tony's facing. So you have Donald Cerrone, Anthony Pettis, Kevin Lee, Rafael dos Anjos, Lando Venata, Edson Barboza, Josh Thompson, Glayson Tebow, who people who people argued that uh could be lost to, uh, Abel Trujillo, Danny Castillo. Let me. Katsunori Kukono, Mike Rio, his last loss, Michael Johnson. Before that, fucking Eve Edwards, bro. Aaron Riley, Ramsey Nijum, just like all these fucking killers, dude. And that are still proving that they're still growing and evolving and like on a super high level. Now, uh, let's look at Khabib's last couple fights. You got Dustin Poirier that's coming up, which I'll get to. You have Conor McGregor, Ally Kinta, Edson Barboza, Michael Johnson, Daryl Horcher, RDA, Pat Healy, Abel Trujillo, and 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 that's what, like the only, for, like relevance. So there's a lot of similar opponents. When you look, when you look at when you look at RDA, Khabib beat RDA and Tony beat RDA. Different ways, different fashions. Khabib used his strength to beat RDA. Uh, Tony proved that. Whatever strengths that RDA and him share that Tony's better at. He's better at what RDA could do on the feet. So Michael Johnson could be went through adversity. And Michael Johnson is super, super, super fucking on point and precise with his shots. And the sniper and so fast, dude. He's like the fucking flash with his hands. And he, um, <clears throat> so Michael Johnson, uh, he beat with the, he, and that Kamori almost broke his arm. Edson Barboza. So Edson Barboza, when Khabib fought him, it was like a, a crazy performance because that was so Khabib being fucking Khabib. You know what I mean? And brutally beating Edson. Brutally. Uh, Ferguson went to war with Edson and came out the victor. He takes people to the dark place and he he just drowns them in it. Now, Al Kinta, people say that was a bad showing for Khabib, right? Super last minute opponent. Um, fundamentally striking, he had his chin up when he was popping his jab a lot. The chin was up. A lot of people speculate, including myself, that that when Connor saw that, that's what gave him the comfort to come fight Khabib because he saw that the the pockets of openings that Michael Jan- Johnson had on the feet that actually clipped Khabib, that Connor would be able to capitalize with his precision striking, and ended up Khabib was the one dropping Connor on the feet, which gives a lot more validation to to, to, to Khabib in his championship. So, when you look at Tony and Donald, Donald, you know when Donald he goes in that in, in that in that roundabout pattern where it's it's just that cycle where he loses and then he he kind of is like looking mediocre and then he starts building momentum and starts looking like a fucking killer and like going in like world championship caliber and then he falls off and then he starts building up and going back and going back and going back. Now you had Donald Cowboy at like a really super prime in his career and a super peak uh, of that cycle at a higher level. And especially with what he did with Ali Kinta, that wasn't easy. And for Tony to go in there, go through what he went through mentally and with with other other stuff he's going through in his personal life and to come back. He always comes back from deep pits of pits of adversity. My bad. I'm going to call. He always comes back from deep pits of adversity in. Um. And, and just shows up stronger. It's like he bathes in the fire and emerges unscathed. And he he always time after time proves that. And even with what he did to make it a point to fight on the Khabib Khabib Connor fight, like to be on that card, he made it that point. And you know he he had a fucking fight of the year on there. So you know when you look at when you look at now. With Dustin Poirier, like I was talking about how when when people come up and they ha- have that cap where they put that stamp on them being a champion, not only championship caliber, they are a champion and now they've validated that. 
and they just have to unify at that point. We saw Dustin do that with Max Holloway, with the with the run Dustin Poirier has been going on, man, with the way his striking's been looking, with the way he, his boxing has been so clean and just like the pressure, the precision, and he's just been looking like the motherfucking champ, like man. And going through going through killers row, not having an easy, easy, easy way up. You could look at look at his fucking last last couple fights, man. Just off the top of my head, man, like. You had you had Gaethje, Pettis, Alvarez, both those Alvarez fights. You know what I mean? Um, you, you Poirier's been through it and taken through it and had fight of the year after fight of the year after fight of the year after fight of the year. And Poirier comes up and he brings it and he's been doing his thing. You know, he got caught a couple of times, got caught by Michael Johnson, who, who, you know, anybody can happen. And he got caught by Connor and Connor just had it. That was on Connor's when Connor was on that wave. You know what I mean? So for 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 his ble- first blemish to be that way and on such a big platform, it kind of it painted him with that brush that you know he's kind of a bum. But he he's been he was so he was so to the mainstream and casual and fans, you know what I mean. But he he went through that adversity and he come back and when he built that momentum, he 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 got bumped by Michael Johnson, but he came back even stronger and proved he's resilient and proved he had that championship caliber heart. I actually. Am having a gut feeling, and I'm I'm probably I don't know my official pick yet, but I'm probably doing my official pick that Dustin's gonna upset and knock out Khabib on the feet. That's just uh, on on the back foot, you know what I mean? I just that's just the feeling I have. And um, what, what Dustin did with Max, like not only has he been been having that cap on, like not that cap, that uh, just putting all the validation on in the division by going to war after war after war with former champions and these monsters and these killers and, and and emerging on top. Not only did he do that, but he put that stamp on it by taking another champion, Max Holloway, a motherfucking monster coming off of the Brian Ortega fight, coming up to another weight class when we've been seeing this wave of fighters coming up looking phenomenal. And for him to do what he did to Max Holloway, which we've never seen done to Max Holloway, is something fucking phenomenal. And he really put that stamp on his shit. So you have now it's back to the three kings. You know, you cut the head off of one, another comes up. And it was unfortunate because it should have been Tony Holloway, which would have been brought us back to the Khabib thing, Khabib to Ferguson fight. But due to personal issues, Tony had a had a had a sit out, and you know, and and Dustin got the opportunity, which he was very deserving of as well. It was just it shit is just so stacked and and. Not only stacked with talent, but stacked with entertainment value, with with uh, the the drawing power of Khabib and Conor McGregor, and and Tony having like the diehard fans and Dustin having the diehard fans, and so you just have a lot of good shit going on. Too much good shit going on that very deserving people are are missing out on what they've earned, and now you have you have Poirier versus Khabib coming up, but you know um, the thing is, man. Tony, we can't just discount the way the way after the, the Cerrone fight that we're like, there's so much shit to play out because, you know, and another thing is, man, why didn't they run it back in October? I meant to get to this point earlier, like way in the beginning, I meant to mention it. But why didn't they run it back Khabib Ferguson in October since he was fighting, ready to fight Pettis that night because Connor was ready to come back. So because of the marquee that Connor is, Tony was just chopped liver for that shit. And then shit happened. They had to do it, and now it's is Dustin Khabib, and because they can't, they can't just 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 fuck up Poirier's title because it's what he's earned. You know what I mean? So now, like, so now Tony's got to sit out, but he's still being active. He's not just oh, I earned it. I'm waiting for my shit. He's gonna keep going through people, adding validation and weight to his belt. And I feel like with his strength of schedule, the win streak he's on, with the the people he's been on it with the way he's been on it with and stylistically because we don't stylistically he has the tools that will be able to 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 beat Khabib in Khabib's strength when I'm what I'm talking about his 10th planet Eddie Bravo Eddie Bravo Jiu Jitsu he he's he's got bro the belt that Jean Jacques gave to Eddie Bravo Eddie Bravo gave to Tony Ferguson so the black belt, you know what I mean? So he is the the he is part of that 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 lineage of that new era of evolution of super creative jujitsu. 
and and Tony's got that man, and he the way he he could do it in chains, and he flows with it, and everything he just flows with everything in there. Even when he's getting hit, he flows with it. Even when he's getting dropped, he flows with it. He rolls with it. And I feel like as of right now, especially taking in, into consideration that the the weight that his, his belt has, and stylistically he has all the tools. Where excuse me, if you're if you're matching it, if you're looking at matchup on paper. Tony's striking is fucking deadly and brutal, and he's like, it's like a slasher film. You go in there and you come out looking like the victim of a slasher film. Look at his last, look at the pictures of his last opponents. So, Khabib, Khabib is has mastered the 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 cycle and system of the Khabib ground and pound system, and, and the the wrist riding and. And get it, and, and controlling the legs, and getting getting the hooks in when you're over the legs, when the legs are straightened out, and and, and really controlling the opponent, and, and really getting in those ground strikes, and really hurting your opponent, and being being keeping very busy with powerful, meaningful shots on ground. He he revolutionized ground and pound in his system, but when you look at an overall mixed martial artist, Tony is overall a more fuller mixed martial artist. And um, Khabib's more of a, a a a super deadly specialist, and you have Tony, and he's like you you know he's a super super deadly submission specialist, and he's a striking specialist as well. So I mean, you take the that's all the aspects you and dude, kickboxing Muay Thai, those elbows, dude, every facet of the overall game, Tony is super fucking high level in the lead at. And he's been he's been executing his will and hit whatever he wants to happen on his opponents for how long now? Even if shit, shit happens, he takes that he roll. It's almost like he takes that kinetic energy, absorbs it into potential energy, and then just throws it back as kinetic energy. He's like motherfucking vibranium, you know what I mean? In the Black Panther suit and shit like that. So like he is he is. A champion, no doubt about it. And now you got the three kings again. You got Khabib, Tony, and Dustin. Now Khabib and Dustin are gonna unify, hopefully, if everything goes well. So, however that plays out, that is who. Wh- however, however that plays out, one of those one of those gentlemen's heads are getting cut off as the king, and they're losing their throne. That's just the way it goes. And whoever emerges the king needs to see the king, Tony Ferguson. And, you know, I would say it would be the weight. The weight is between between Khabib and it's all close between all of them, right? The weight that their championship belts have. But because of how consistent and the, the duration of Tony's and the strength of schedule on the opponents and the fashion, it's super up there. And because of Khabib's Khabib's strength of schedule and his his unification with the lineal championship, it's really up there too. And Dustin's is right up there too, but just a little bit lower because he hasn't had like because of the opportunity wise. Because but because he needs to you know fight one of these kings to see what happens. You know what I mean? And he fought Max Holloway, the king. So it's just like just a little smidget off. Just like a, a like like a like a little like millimeter like micro micro metric it's off, but I feel like also on another level that micro like in micro metrics that Tony Ferguson's is slightly weighing more than Khabib's, just because of the strength of schedule and that we haven't seen anyone like because Khabib is a specialist. Tony also has the skills to to just negate that and use that to his advantage and, and really end the fight in a submission. So because of that factor, I feel like until we see those two, those two people fight it out and unify that, I feel like because of that, like I'm leaning slightly more towards Tony, honestly. And yeah, man, I just feel like th- these are my thoughts on it because I feel like, I feel like, Tony just can't get passed up. And even if he does, because the entertainment, I'm not just because he he, like the, the, the commission and Dana White doesn't say you have a belt. You are a champion still. And we can't let the, the business perception really affect the truth and the reality of 
the the weight and the what they what these fighters have earned. You know what I mean? So even with Tyson Fury, like I was talking, man, he's the lineal champ with the with the with the claim to the WBC belt. He like him and Deion. I actually come to came to the revel, revel, revelation yesterday that both him and Deontay Wilder are the unified heavyweight champs because Tyson had ha, has the claim to to the belts. Like in reality, AJ was the interim champ to AJ was the interim champ to Tyson Fury. So so Tyson, those are really Tyson's belts. And and Deontay had the other component, the WBC belt. They both came to a draw, which gives them equal claim to each other's championship titles, which makes them both the unified champ, which means we need the series to see who comes out as a true one champ. And that's why I was saying similar to the boxing model, because that's kind of where we're at in the UFC. And with the lightweight division and except in boxing, at least I, I honestly feel like my bad. I mean, I didn't mean to get it, but I want to get this point up. I feel like the UFC should come up with some other kind of championship, like in situations like this, like like the UFC unified the undisputed champ and the 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 UFC international champ. I, I like not. I don't know logistically the title is something like that, or maybe you even put instead of a UFC. Like the what like like a different like kind of like promotional body just for that opponent like like Connor was saying the McGregor belt like some shit like that but for like the people that that really earned it and just like some like the 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 MMA international championship or some shit like that you know what I mean just give them that so they have the benefits of the champion so they're not fucked over and they don't have like just so they could get what they earned. At least in the in the cage, you know what I mean. And Tony Ferguson's not getting what he's earning, and it's fucked up. He's getting ripped off, and it's fucked up. And we we gotta give him the respect he's due, and he, he's due a lot of respect. So yeah, that's my thoughts on it. And you already know it's Mastermind MMA.